Hello and welcome to the first ever GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we discuss whether tech can actually make cycling more fun. We'll introduce you to the GCN Wall of Fame, the Bike Vault, and tell you everything that's cool in the world of cycling tech. John, how good is this, mate? An entire show devoted to tech. You'll be asking the question, I'm sure, just what can you expect from it? That's right. We're going to give you the latest product launches, spy shots, tech releases, everything from within tech world of cycling. Yeah, and we also want to hear from you a lot. For a start, we're going to need your nominations each week for the brand new GCN Wall of Fame. Which are the products that have most shaped the cycling landscape? We need you to tell us, and then we can do the inducting. That's right. And we want to see your bikes too. Our friends at GMBN, they've opened up the bike vault and we want to put in your road bikes, your cyclocross bikes, your gravel bikes, your touring bikes. Yeah, and you've already been sending them in, in fact, on social media. So we actually have our very first ones to check out this week. And remember, things aren't actually set in stone. No. We want to know what you want to see in the GCN Tech Show. That's right, let us know in the comments section down below. But for now, John, I think we'd better crack on. What has the Detector found this week? The Detector? Yeah. Come on, Simon, we can do better than that. I'm not sure we can, mate. This is kind of still GCN after all. Yeah. Okay, well, first up, Matthew van der Poel, him and his cyclocross team have moved over to Canyon and they're riding the new Canyon in flight SLX cyclocross bikes. Well, that frame design was pretty polarizing, wasn't it, when it was launched? And if anyone needs convincing out there, I think that's enough to convince them. Yeah, I think so too. That is one very, very nice looking bike. And of course, the Madita Canyon team was also launched on January the 1st. That will be headed up by British rider Nicky Bramier. And so those in-flights are going to be a pretty common sight in the cyclocross world as of now. Yeah. Also, apparently Trek Segafredo are going to be using disc brake equipped bikes all season this year. Wow. So the climbers will be on the Amondas and the classics riders on the Damanis. Yeah, it makes you think, doesn't it, that there must be a Madon disc coming up soon. And also, that's a pretty seismic shift, isn't it? It wasn't just a couple of seasons ago when the mere mention of disc brakes would have most pro cyclists looking the other way. Bad. They look, they look disgusting. They look like they don't belong. And this is a big move. You know, the big race winners have got to be pretty convinced in order to make this shift. Yeah. Maybe that's why, in fact, Trek have waited until both Fabian Cancellara and Alberto Contador have retired. <laughs> yeah, two traditionalists. Also hot this week, graphene. Yep, graphene. Apparently, Vittoria have just taken a delivery of 250 kilograms of the stuff. Of course, they use that in their tyres and their wheels. That's got to be a lot of graphene, isn't yeah. it? You'd think. Anyway, stay tuned because we have more tech coming up later in the show. So each week, we're going to tackle a burning question. And this week, what better way to start with one very close to our hearts? Does tech make cycling fun? Yeah, I suspect, John, that we are probably going to be in agreement here. But there are many people out there that feel that tech can actually detract from the simplicity, from the purity of cycling. Because it is a physical sport, after all. It's elemental. And therefore, spending time worrying about what brake pads you use or whether your gears are charged up could kind of detract from it. Well, to that side, I would say change your brake pads and charge your group set before you ride. Problem solved. All right. Cycling is not just a physical sport, though, is it? Running, that's a physical sport. Cycling is about human and machine. And since its earliest days, we've actually been defined by the bike that you, you ride. OK, all right, I take that. But isn't there a point at which actually we're just trying to improve on perfection? Well, maybe not perfection. We're not there yet. But increasingly, we're seeing a law of diminishing returns, aren't we? Is this new tech really any better? I mean, are 22 gears meaningfully better than 12 gears were? And that's quite a topical point now because we're increasingly talking about one by, which has only got 11 gears, remember? So are people right in thinking then that actually we're just being sold this idea of new tech to make us want to go and spend money when in actual fact, what we already had was great? Rubbish. You have to draw the line somewhere. Unless you're riding around on a wooden wheeled safety bicycle, then you're using a tech innovation of some sort. Maybe it's Campagnolo's Duralia or Lux Clipless Pedals. Remember, today's tech is tomorrow's retro tech. People will be riding around saying, why do I need internal gears controlled only by the power of my mind when my wireless e-taps just fine? You really think that we're going to be riding around with internal gears powered only by the mind? I think that's a debate for another day. Okay, all right. I'd take your point though, but what happens 
when tech just kind of takes over from riding. I mean, what happens if you're short on time, you've got an hour to ride, and then when you go and get your bike out, you realise your group set battery's flat, your power meter battery's flat, your head unit battery's flat, your lights are flat. Well, what are you supposed to do? OK, OK, I agree with you there, but it's not just electronics, is there? There's mechanical group sets too. Now, they are tech, and riding retro bikes are fun because of the tech. Not because it's simple, but what I will give into though is consumerism. Not that it's a bad thing per se, but I'd hate for someone to be dissatisfied with what they've got because of the latest innovations. Yeah, absolutely. Tech can make cycling fun, but whether that's because you're building up a fixed gear bike out of a load of old bits or you're renovating a retro bike, it doesn't have to be about the latest innovation. It certainly doesn't have to be about the most expensive. No. We will be setting out to prove that, in fact, in the coming weeks and months. Yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Does tech make cycling fun? Yeah. I've been having to think about why I do feel that it makes cycling fun. And for me, it's the fact that it can totally change your riding experience depending on what tech you're using. So, for example, if you go out on a single speed cyclocross bike, for example, it's incredibly simple, it's incredibly pure, and it's silent and it's so robust. But yet, you're kind of doing the same thing when you then swing your leg over a cutting edge aero bike and it just goes ridiculously fast for no extra effort. Same sport, but just totally different experiences. Yeah, as much as I love riding my carbon bike with DI2 shifters, when I go onto my 80s bike with down tube shifters, I still love riding it just as much because it's a challenge and it's a different tech and you've just got to reset your mind almost. Yeah. I love it. You see, running, running can't give you that. You go out for a run and it's the same run no matter what pair of shoes you wear. I, I don't go running, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't go running either. It's a ball. Right, I'm here in the dirt shed of the GMBN channel, and I'm with Martin Ashton, Welcome. the man himself. Welcome to the dirt shed. How does it feel to be in the top set? It's dirty. Uh, it's dirty in here. It That's is. One thing. It's quite grimy. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. It's different. It's yeah, nice. it's very real. It's yes. like how we like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> so you're here to find out about the bike vault. I am. Yeah. Yes. I want to know everything and anything about it. It's a pretty simple process, right? You guys send in your bikes uh, and we get to decide, right, when we're playing the game, if it's nice, obviously it's nice, it's obviously. a bike, or is it super nice? Is it, right. is, it, is it so good that it's super nice? Okay. All right, so that, that's the levels. Nice, super nice. Yeah. Okay, if it's super nice, you hit your horn. Yeah. Whoop. And then the Whoop. person who sent in their bikes well chuffed. Brilliant. That's basically how it goes. That's, so that's how um, it goes. And you might give it a super nice because it's just a beautiful bike or they've done something with it that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's quirky. It might be that it's just so bad it's good. It might be just a great photo. There's no real, real definitive reason, okay. but, but usually it's quite apparent. Right. Yeah. Right, well, pass your horn. Oh, hang on a second. Um, this is our horn, right? Because oh, you're in yeah. the dirt shed, right? And I can't just let you take... The G as much as I'd like you to have a GMBM bottle on GCN, <laughs> oh. you can't use our horn. You, you need to get your own horn. So a GCN bottle, probably. And a I thought this was coming. I thought this was coming. So I came prepared. <laughs> and down here, my little bag of tricks. OK. I've brought something. Right. It's a very special horn. In fact, it's not even a horn. It's a What's siren. That? What's that? Well, That's... won't go around many handlebars. Look at that. It's <laughs> a bit narrow. Doesn't look very waterproof. But go on. designed for bikes. I'm going to hit what you with it. it? <laughs> I like that. I do like that. That is going to work. Okay. Right. So, go for what's it. this? Gillis uh, Mini bike. has this. A Stevens Xenon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we've... Personally, I think we've started at a nice. Yeah, it I is mean, nice, I mean, isn't it? You're, you're, the, you're the technology here. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, it's... Um, it's I like that bike stand, actually. Do you know what, it's, sturdy, you know what the it? bike stand's what's doing my head in? Really? Honest. Yeah, I, oh, no. I, I really, I'm really into the bike, but the bike stand's sort of like, maybe more than you needed. Personally, yeah, I yeah. think we've started with a nice. Wow. Oh, I've just thrown a curveball in here. <laughs> wow. It's Jan Trenson's Quattro Velo. <laughs> that is what a super nice looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we can't see much of it, can we? It's Dude, not on the bike, but we can horn. see it. Hit your horn. Okay, here we go. The first super nice ever wow. on the GCN Tech Channel. And deservedly <laughs> so. Look at that thing. Look at it. What even? What's he got on the on the? I'd like to is say top two. Is that for some kind of speed? Is, is, is that it? for a speed record? There's or? another one. Oh my and god. And something else. And a what looks like a a fat. A, a mini, fat mini bike know. in the background. Yeah, know. it's got it's all happening in the See, a super nice, it's just obvious when you see yeah. one. Natalia Valeva's BMC SLR02 team machine. 
Is it is it me or is that sort of standard setup? Is it standard? Um, is there something ah, going on there? In their in their email, they did mm. actually mention that this bike is full ceramic bearings and everything, and that the, the cherry on the cake was in fact the wheels. Um, full ceramic bearings. Full ceramic bearings. <laughs> That's not full super ceramic nice. Bearings. What is? <laughs> I I think it's super nice actually. Is I'm, it what did that for you? The ceramic I, bearings? Because I, I just I like it. It, nice. it matches. You know, there's like a little red. There's a little red mount there for GPS. There's there's a few little Can't bits see. of detail. There's, there's your horn. Bottle cage. There's match. your horn. Hit it. There's the horn. Thought wasn't gonna work. <laughs> Here we go. Tim Lowers from Belgium. Mm. He sent in this giant TCR disc. I get the feeling Tim don't mess around. He doesn't mess around, does he? He doesn't hang around either. No, he don't mess around. When he takes that out of the old flat, yeah. it means oh, business. I, yeah. I can hear those wheels on the tarmac. Hit that, hit, hit that horn, man. Hit that horn. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's we're it, that's we're it. The boat roll. See it? I'm getting to it. Yeah, it. I wanted more. Oh. In it. I wanted um, more. And well, I want everyone at home to send theirs in. Yes. Email address here. Got to do it. Send, send your in bike there. in. You know, is it a nice or is it a super nice? Can you get that all coveted super nice? Yeah. Good luck. More tech! Whoa, well, Christmas and New Year is a pretty quiet time for tech and product releases, but one company heading into 2018 in fine style is Condor. That's right, the iconic British brand is celebrating its 70th anniversary this year. Yeah, bonkers, isn't it? The founder, Monty Young, started making bespoke bike frames in London back in 1948. Tom Simpson has raced one, Bradley Wiggins has ridden one, dare I say it, John, I was even fortunate enough to race one back in 2009 during what I affectionately call the mullet era. Wow. Well, I think we can expect some pretty cool product releases coming out in 2018, actually, from Condor to celebrate yeah. that anniversary. And before I start going to town on the mullet years, I think it's worth us taking a look at what the pros they'll be using in 2018. That's right. We've got more and more info coming out now that the season is officially starting. Firstly, Sunweb officially moving from Pioneer power meters to Shimano power meters, it's something that Eagle Eye John here thought he spotted back at the 2017 Tour de France. Also, more news from Team Sunweb is that the giant GPS head unit that they have been using has been replaced by a new sponsor, Polar. So that means that all their data can be analysed from there instead of the giant one. Exactly. Right, interesting. <laughs> okay, also, talking about head units, we've got uh, Bora Hansgrohe will be using the Wahoo Element Bolt, as I believe will Katusha Alperson as well. Now. What about this, mate? Sky's new Pinarello Dogma F10 has just been released. Some subtle changes there, notably the paintwork. Mm. Love it, loathe it, or like it? I don't like it, I don't love it. I think I loathe it. I don't like that big white bit of panelling. I'm not too sure on that. Not convinced yet. No. No, I don't like it either, so I guess I'm going to have to loathe it in this yeah, fairly poor descriptive choice we've got of just three but anyway there we go never mind what we can neither confirm nor deny actually about this new sky bike is whether or not all team riders will have to use mud guards for races as sported by new recruit dylan van Baal here in his instagram yeah i'm not sure about that although rumors are the grand tour contenders or grand tour riders rather for team sky they have to use it a uh, rumor yeah yeah it's a where did that start uh, i i can't reveal uh I also do like Dylan Van Baal's Cannondale coloured uh, saddlebag on there. Yeah. yeah he's, uh, he looks like a true winter warrior there. To be fair, that is a pro who is actually prepared for their winter training rides. Fair play, that man. Uh, now, also, we talked about Katusha Alperson a moment ago. They and Team Dimension Data will be using the new Oakley helmets, which I believe you first got your hands on in 2017 at Eurobike. Yeah, Dan, Dan Lloyd and I did. We got a, got a quick look at those. I'm not convinced, really, by the look of them yet, no. um, but maybe it will grow on me when I see more, more, more of them in the peloton. It could be a bit awkward if they start growing on you, mate, so just watch out for that. Just uh, yeah, be a bit weird. Yeah. Also, and lastly, but probably not least, in fact, Azure Dizar, Le Mondial, they're going to be using bigger wheels in 2018. Sorry, mate. What? Bigger wheels. Jockey wheels, that is. So they're going to be using the ceramic speed oversized pulley wheels. Apparently, they save you some watts. Yeah, what is it, like four watts or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Not to be sniffed at. Yeah, we're going to have to take a look at those. Yeah, we should actually, shouldn't we? Do some science. 
Okay, each week we are gonna pit two bikes head to head and leave you to decide which one is best. And we're gonna use that term lightly, best, because what is one bike rider's favorite steed is another's worst. Exactly. Touring bikes, oh. Hey, steady on, come on. Illustrate my point there, John. Okay. All right, so coming up, we have, first of all, in the blue corner, Team Sky's brand new Pinarello Dogma F10. Now, you already know our views on it, but don't let that color your opinions. It is their one and only road bike of the season. Aerodynamic and also lightweight. It's got Shimano's Dura-Ace DI2 groups on there. It's got Shimano wheels. It's got Pinarello's own most integrated bar and stem. And also, cheeky little physique saddle sat on top of that seat post there. Yeah, and in the other corner, slightly darker blue corner, is 3T Strada bike, as used by the Aqua Blue Sport team. It's got SRAM one by group set, 11 gears. It's got disc brakes, yep, disc brakes. And it's their only bike of the season. Exactly, so you need to decide which one is best. You can choose Pinarello or 3T, Shimano or SRAM, rim brakes or disc brakes, 22 gears or 11 gears. Vote up there now. Which ones are gonna be, the Pinarello or the 3T? You decide. Well, it's time to introduce you to the GCN Tech Show Wall of Fame. Yeah. As you can see, it is quite empty at the moment. Or in fact, we're completely empty, isn't it? But then we can't really do anything without you because what we need are your nominations for the most important cycling products of all time. Now, it could be something that's completely changed the face of the sport, like derailers or clipless pedals, or it could just be something that's defined an era for a short period of time, like spinergy wheels. And it doesn't even have to have worked very well, like RockShox Ruby Forks or Campagnolo Delta Brakes. Whatever it is, if you've got something to nominate, and we really hope that you have, get involved in the comments section down below. Tell us what the product is and why it deserves a place on our wall of fame. And what would also be super helpful is if you happen to own said product, you can take some pictures of it and then send it to us on social media using the hashtag GCNTech wall. Get stuck in. Cannot wait to see what you start sending in. This is gonna get geeky. Now, sadly, we're nearing the end of the very first GCN Tech Show. However, a little bit of an insight for you. Coming up this week on Friday, we're gonna take you into the GCN Tech Clinic so you can find out exactly what that's all about. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Sunday, we've got a pro bike. Actually, it's not really a pro bike, is it? It's one of mine, but still, it is my Orbea Orca Disc with SRAM Red E-Tap on there. And it's lovely, if I do say so myself. And then Monday's maintenance video is with John. He's telling us how we straighten up our cockpits. Yeah, handlebars, stems, shifters, all that kind of jazz. And then, of course, we're also gonna need your help with next week's GCN Tech Show. So we not only need your nominations for the Wall of Fame, but we also want you to get involved with the hot topic. So, is one by the future, or is it a compromise too far? Now, we know this gets you hot under the collar, so please get involved in the comments section. Yeah, and don't forget as well to subscribe to the GCN Tech channel. Just click on the logo here. And remember to like and share this with your friends too. Yeah, and if you want to watch another video here on the Tech channel, you haven't got all that much choice at the moment, but what you do have, it's not a bad one. Five hacks for less flats. I know that's not grammatically correct, but it did sound good in my head. Yeah, and click just down here for the latest GCN show. Sign about your mullet. You think I should grow it back? Yes, bring it back. Bring back the mullet for 2018. <laughs>